As a video playback engineer, there's one ticket I get more often than any other. <laughs> the video doesn't work. If I'm lucky, it includes the expected behavior. The video should work. If I'm really lucky, it includes a stream. I've had to pick those papers up off the floor so many times. But I spent a long time being frustrated by these tickets. They appear low effort. Why should I spend time debugging an issue if the reporter didn't spend any time debugging it themselves? But our job is to make videos simple for others. And a reporter shouldn't have to know anything more than the video works or it doesn't work. That's it. So what can we do? Well, the simple answer is we could try and play the stream and look for the source of the issue. If we see this or this, there's a good chance we found the source of the problem. But we already knew there was a problem. We just verified it. The real question is, how do we go about debugging it? So what do we do for that? I wrote a whole website on the subject at debugvideo.com. There's even a terrible hand-drawn logo of a worm on top of a video player. There are pages and pages of steps. Here's an example of debugging using the stream from the ticket before. This is going to be sped up because we do not have enough time to watch this at normal speed. But the first thing we do is open the console and check for messages. There are none, so we grab the video element and check the buffered ranges. There are two, which means we're dealing with a gap. We log out the times of the buffered ranges and use the time of that gap to guess where in the manifest it might be. We look at both audio and video renditions because this is demux content and because we're dealing with HLS manifest timings, which are a do the best you can kind of reporting, we get segments both before and after where we think that gap will be. So now that we know around what time ranges we're looking at, we could download each of the audio and video segments. We have to make sure to grab the init segments too, which I definitely didn't forget to do at first here because we need those to run FF probe. Once we have all of the audio, video, and init segments, we can catenate each of the audio and video segments with their respective init segments, and finally can run FF Probe on each. From there, we get the start and end times of each of those segments and can associate those times with each listed segment in the manifest. So what we're going to see here is even though there's a gap in audio, we need to check video as well. This is mostly for completeness when reporting on the problem back to the ticket reporter. After we have all of the times, both for the audio and video segments, we can write a note and send that over to the ticket reporter. And if we really want completeness, we can package up all of the segments with a command that I can never, ever remember. It takes a while. In software engineering, there's a term called toil. And this was a terrible choice of slides, but the Google SRE handbook defines toil by six key attributes. And if you can't read it, in short, it's work that feels like a chore. I didn't get into programming because I wanted more chores. I got into programming because I wanted to build more cool new things. Debugging video, even using a website like debugvideo.com with a great logo, that's toil. It's slow and it's boring. But there's one great feature of Toil, and that's this attribute. It's automatable. And building tools to automate Toil, that could be fun, because the process of building one is building a cool new thing. So I wanted to build a cool new thing to replace my boring checklist website. And because I'm clearly great at thinking up new and unique names, I named it debug.video. I promise this is the last of these terrible slides, but my process for reducing toil involves four steps. Identify inputs, collect inputs, process inputs into outputs, and present outputs. And it has the great abbreviation or acronym of Ikipiopo. If it's not named debug video, then I'm clearly lost. <laughs> I think this is a slide improvement. But our initial goal is not to automate all of debugvideo.com. Instead, it's to try to reduce the largest sources of toil. Opening the browser's developer console and reading the logs, that isn't time consuming or hard. But downloading segments, concatenating those segments with init segments, probing those concatenated segments, and then associating the segment times with manifest lines, 
that occupies about 75% of my debugging time and 95% of my frustration. So I focused on those. Our inputs are segments, but how do we get them? Let's make some assumptions. First, we're dealing with browser-based video playback. Yes, that's a browser. And in this case, the content is coming from a CDN. Second, media source extensions is used to play the video. Because if the user is using a plugin, then we've gone back in time and need to relearn Flash and OSMF. But where are the segments coming from? Well, there are two places. The actual network requests and the MSC appends. The network requests provide the segments themselves. The appends as the browser sees, which depending on your player may have gone through some modifications. For instance, transmuxing TS segments to MP4. Since they can be different, let's get both. Browsers don't like sharing the contents of network requests to random scripts, I suppose for good reason. We're not going to modify player code here because we want to support all players. And if we start modifying XHR and fetch APIs, someone might get angry at us. <laughs> But if any of you have built a DevTools browser extension, you may be aware that there's a network API called devtools.network, and it has the request and response headers and bodies. My first thought was to write a DevTools extension, which forwards network calls to a native app. But I don't like installing extensions very often or having to run an extension and a program. So I used an environment that provided the same APIs, but within everyone's favorite framework, Electron. Since Electron windows are rendered using a Chromium-based browser engine, devtools.network can be accessed via pages webcontents.debugger messages. With that, we can collect requests and responses, meaning we have the manifests and segments. Next, we need the segments appended to MSE. This is trickier, as there's no API provided for this. But this is JavaScript. We can replace whatever we want. So let's ignore the fact that we didn't want to modify the XHR and fetch APIs and just overwrite the window.media source object to capture appends. Once those inputs are saved somewhere, we can run the scripts we usually run manually. In this case, ffprobe. There's some more code for associating manifests and init segments with segments, but what's important is that we now have the details we need and just need to present them. The most straightforward solution is to log the results. We can even log what we manually created before, but with media, it's much more fun to look at something graphic. Plus, we're already in Electron, so we can use anything meant for the browser to make fun visualizations. So now, let's take our original issue, the video doesn't work, and try our debugging steps with debug.video. After opening debug.video, we enter the URL to the page we were testing, and hit play. From there, we can see that there's a segments tab and it lists all the segments that were downloaded. And we can immediately see that there's a gap between the audio segments two and three, and that video does not have the same gap. If we want, we can even export a .dbgvid file that you can send to the ticket reporter so they can view the same results. I mentioned that we also captured appends and there's a section for that. There's even a manifest section that shows the downloaded manifests and we can even go further and download manifests that weren't requested on the page itself and click to navigate, downloading segments as well. There's a lot more that debug.video can do, and I recommend that you check out the website. It's at uh, debug.video. What I want you to take away from this is not that debug.video is the coolest tool ever. I'm biased, and even I know that's not true. And it's definitely not icky... Ikipiopo, because even I can't pronounce that acronym with any kind of consistency. What I want to leave you with are two ideas. Well, three if you include don't use the slides like I did. First, when a ticket comes in without much detail, there may be an opportunity there to reduce toil, both for the reporter and the person doing the debugging. And second, Make tools to reduce toil, and if you can, share them with the community, because that's how we can all get back to building cool new things. Thank you.